EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour are proud to bring you this look at the future stars in the sport of golf. We're a couple of blocks off of fabled Sunset Boulevard at Riviera Country Club for third round coverage of the California Classic. Rich Lerner here in our tower overlooking the 18th green. Frank Navalo is by my side. Out on the course, we've got Nota Begay III and Iona Steven as we check the Saturday leaderboard. Some good names up there, including our leader. That's going to do the job. If you're not going for it in two, this is the safe route, and that's well done. Didn't check, Frank. Yeah, just not enough spin on that, um, really. I mean, that almost, like, took that first bounce and just ricocheted forward. This is a 13-footer. There, that'll leave just a couple of feet. Okay, that's in for par here at the first. And she's going to stay at minus three. Next up, the number one handicap holder, Riviera, the 471-yard par four second, playing into the prevailing ocean breeze, making it play that much longer. Par is a very good score here. No problems there. That's going to wind up safely in the fairway. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze. Well, had a good look at the green, but couldn't cash it in. In the rough now, wondering what might have been. Back to 
just gonna sneak on by. Okay, it's a bogey here at the second. And she's gonna drop to two under par. Moving now to the 434 yard, par 4 third at Riviera. Best way to attack here is to carry that fairway bunker on the left to set up a good angle on your approach. This one working up the right side. Oh, and it's a narrow fairway here at three, but that'll be in a great spot. Walking the course today, let's bring in Nota Begay the third. 144 left to the hole. Pin about medium depth, though it is on the left side. And that one barely makes the front of the green. Do you realize if you just miss hit the middle of the club, by a quarter of an inch, you lose 10%. That's right, 10%. Yeah, that's good putt. That was a slippery one, but that's well done. So that safely in. It's a par here at the third. And she'll remain at two under. Arriving now at the 236-yard par-3 fourth, what Ben Crenshaw once called the greatest par-3 hole in America. High praise from the 19-time PGA Tour winner. And that one gets a nice kick, and it will hop onto this fourth green. We welcome in Iona Steven. This, a putt for birdie. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Rich, this is not a complicated putt. We're going up a little slope, so pace essential. Oh, yes, plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie she'll move to minus three for the tournament. Up next, Riviera's 434-yard par four fifth. A lot to worry about here. Canyon wall and OB on the right, trees down the left, and of course, the iconic grass mound, which cuts into the fairway short of the green. Beautiful tempo to that swing, and this is going to wind up squarely in the fairway. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze.
Uh, it's just a touch too long. I mean, personally, I'd rather it be putting back up the hill than coming down. It's pretty quick. Nope. That one finished off. It is a part here at five. And her score is going to stay right where it is. You don't see this too often, do you? A bunker cut directly into the green. And usually bunkers are in front or guarding the right or left side. This one smack in the center. It is one of the most unusual holes in all of golf. 169 yards, the par 3 sixth here at Riviera. So that one off target, knocked down a bit by that tree, and that'll make things difficult from there. Yep, heard that nicely. That'll work out just fine. Nicely read there. It is a par here at the sixth. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Moving on to the seventh, 408-yard par four with a massive bunker running down the left side and a barranca down the right. Fairway narrows considerably at the 270-yard mark, so accuracy off the tee, critical. Yeah, that's a nice swing, and the result is going to be a tee shot that is set up just fine. After a good tee shot, Iona, this her second. Yes, it's 126 yards left to the flag, pin in the middle, so it's a green light. That's a disappointment right there, Frank. Yeah, green light special, really. Come up considerably short. From about eight feet. Yep, well done. That's in for par here at seven. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Well, great design. And Riviera, everyone agrees, is one of the best designs in the world. Great design makes you think. It gives you options. So what do you do here at this 433-yard par 4 eighth? You going to go left side or right side? Take your pick.
nope, you got to pick a line one way or the other, and this splits the two fairways and winds up in that long, snaking bunker. And that is into that left side fairway. That's where most players like to be, and that will work out just fine. unfair sometimes that looked in the whole way that one finished off it's a bogey here at number eight and that will not help the cause we finish up the front side at Riviera with a 458 yard par 4 ninth one of the finest par fours in the game a long straight drive if you can manage it we'll take the two fairway bunkers out of play Well, you can't walk out and drop it any better than that. That is a fine tee shot right there. From the fairway, we check in with Noda. Beautiful look at the ninth with the clubhouse in the background, but players beware, severely uphill. Whatever club you select, add one more. This one's looking good. And more evidence why the Corn Ferry Tour is such a great breeding ground. The iron play like that is good enough for any PGA Tour event. Nothing to it. Well done. It's a birdie here at the ninth. And that will mean it's an even par score of 35 on this front side. Up next, the 315-yard par 4 tent. This may be the most beloved hole at Riviera, short par 4 that offers so many options. Certainly drivable, but only a perfect drive will hold this green. And the miss right will usually result in a bogey or worse. There's two schools of thought here. Bomber driver down there, but perhaps have an awkward yardage. We'll hit the three wood and have a full iron in here. And 
That's gonna leave some work, but it'll end up okay. Got it there, but not quite on target. So that's in for par to start this backside. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Arriving now at the second par five on the course, the 583 yard 11. Eucalyptus trees lining both sides of the fairway and a grass barranca about 200 yards from the green has to be navigated on your second shot. Okay, this is not the biggest of fairways at Riviera, but that's a good drive here at 11. Okay, pretty good shot right there. Didn't quite release all the way out after landing in the fairway, but still, chance for an up and down birdie at this par five. A dead on look here for birdie. You bet, a birdie here at the 11th. And she'll move four under par. Up next, a toughie, the 479 yard par 4 12th. It is a gentle left to right, so fading the ball is encouraged. Up near the green, beware of that lone sycamore tree known as the Humphrey Bogart tree. So named because he loved watching golf and relaxing under its shade. All right, in the fairway. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze. It just came out blazing. As soon as it hit the green, it was never going to stop. And this will be a five-foot putt here. steps there it is a par here at 12 and she'll remain at four under par next it's on to the 13th at 459 yards where the 12th bent left to right number 13 goes the other way trying to make you utilize 
all the shots in your arsenal. That's the mark of a really good design. This one again featuring a narrow landing zone leading up to a smallish heart-shaped green. I guess it got the 90% air, but that ball actually went through that tree. Good, clean contact and a nice result and a chance for birdie coming up. A birdie opportunity here at 13. And this is working back up the hill, but it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of break to it whatsoever. to get up that slope it is in for a birdie and she'll move now to five under par onward now to the 14th of par three at 192 yards flanked by bunkers this green is wider than it is deep making it important to get one up in the air and stop it quickly All right, you take those all day long. On the green, chance for birdie coming up. This would be a big bonus if it went in more than likely just trying to get this one close. Oh, dude, that. What a roll that was. A long one in for birdie. And she moves to six under par. Next up, the par four 15th at 487 yards. It's another one that favors someone who can move the ball left to right off the tee. If you've got enough to work it over that fairway bunker right, it should leave you with an open look to a fairly accessible green. Turning out to be a wonderful Saturday at golf here, and this, another fine tee shot. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze.
about the speed here? Are you kidding? That is exceptional from that distance. That is worth a wow. Okay, a solid par here at the 15th. And she'll stay three shots off the lead. On now to the 16th at 166 yards. It's the smallest green on the course, but the difficulties don't end there. It's also surrounded by three deep and large bunkers. Plus, that tree left of the tee box can get you if you're not careful. It's always so disappointing from that kind of a spot when you come up short. Yeah, you're looking your chops over that one. A shot you think you could hit directly at the flag. Uh, now, test for the short game. Yeah, that'll do nicely. Just beyond the hole. Super job there out of the bunker. Okay, didn't want to let that one get away. It is a par here at 16, and she's going to stay at six under par. We make our final turn back up toward the clubhouse as we come to the 590-yard par 517. Getting on here in two is no sure thing, especially given all the bunkers that pop up along the way. Be a little disappointed with that because it lands in the rough and it appears to be fairly thick over there. Has to be thrilled with that second shot here to the par five. Frank got everything out of that. Yeah, did well just to advance the ball so far down the fairway. And now a fairly straightforward third shot. Maybe not what you're hoping for from that number, but no damage. It's on the green. A look here for birdie at 17. Still have to be aware of the slope coming downhill, but not a ton of break in this.
well short and not the best leave either. That's going to be a tough one for par. Just five feet left. Yeah, that's good putt. It is in for par here at 17. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Here's a tough one to finish out our day at Riviera, the famous 475-yard par 4 18. This one cut right up against the side of the hill on the left. You'll need to keep something in the fairway here to have a good approach into that renowned 18th green. Turning out to be a wonderful Saturday of golf here, and this, another fine tee shot. From the fairway, let's go to Noda. Tough not to get distracted with the majestic amphitheater setting here at the 18th at Riviera, but be mindful, you must land the ball left of the hole to get it close. Miss hit, wrong club. What happened there, Frank? All of the above, maybe. It's a little bit of a head scratcher. Wasn't that hard a shot. So a tap in there, that's for par at the last. Tell you what, Frank, for our featured golfer, I think it's a good opportunity tomorrow. As they finish day three, just two shots off the lead. What do you think? Yeah, I'm with you, Rich, there. I mean, two shots are so close, really. Birdie bogey and you're tied. Um, great position to be in. 